You know, Spirit Airline has no leg room or bathrooms. Seats aren't very big either. What up, everybody, and welcome to the FB and Goob Show. I'm FB. I'm the Goob. Sponsored by the Good Time Tavern of Livermore, California. How's the Goob? Uh, way too good right now, I'll be honest. Giants just lost. Fall sports, sure. Getting ready to start. Football's in full swing. And I got my partner in crime back from Talladega. So all things are A-OK in the land of Goob. Completely back. I'm completely back since we didn't do really a show last week. You took it and did solo stuff because I was um I, I called it a hiatus. Yeah. But vacation, baby. Yeah. So I was doing the fiftieth birthday thing. Um <clears throat> a wonderful experience at Talladega. As you can see, I'm I got my, my gift too. It's yeah, pretty sweet. You got your you got your busher hat on. I got nah, just number seventeen. On. I just really like seventeen, right? I uh, I enjoyed the new people I met, Big Derek, uh, Ronnie, and Javon. Now, shout out to the new subscribers, doggies. Yeah, shout out to the new subscribers and just hanging out with them. I had a really good time just hanging out with them. Um, we enjoyed a lot of laughs, so uh, that was the important part. You got to be able to have fun when you're doing stuff. And it was good to see Tyrone again. I haven't seen Tyrone in a long time where I hung out like that. I think the last time I think he was in San Diego, I took the family down there. And we went, we went to that Packers Chargers game. So that was fun. Hey, so, man, he's the only person ever to make a catfish sandwich with bones in it. Yeah, right. Fucking genius. This guy's genius. Yeah, no, it was good. So, Love you, uh, and uh, we did the same thing there. We barbecued again and um, smoked shit and had fish and. And and watch racing. So I had a really good time there. So and right listen, speaking of a Talladega, let's just start at Talladega. What do you think? Sure. Yeah, yes. absolutely. I'll ask you three questions after you feed us the info. All right, you go ahead and ask questions. Since I was there and I saw it live in person, every lap, except maybe with the one where I was gonna cocktail. Um, I, I think I can answer most of the questions. And I'll give you my own breakdown of what I saw. It was weird. You know, you, it's different watching it live than it is on TV and only seeing the leaders. I saw everybody. One guy oh, yeah, by himself, no. another guy by himself. <laughs> oh, no, I went to break down first. I'll ask you about the crawfish after. Okay. Yeah, no, it was crazy. I mean, yeah, loudest thing ever. I had to get earplugs because I was deaf. Um, and, you know, like I said, when you watch it on TV, it's different. You like only watch the leaders, you watch what's going on. They might show you a blip. I saw a lot of crazy shit. Like I saw the, uh, AJ Allmendinger, he's by himself for like the whole race. I was like, Hmm, that guy must be in a <laughs> world of trouble. And the next thing you know, at one point in time, he was leading the race. I was like, I, I, how the fuck is that guy leading the race? Apparently he was just on such a different pitch strategy. A lot of the time he was so ahead of everybody <laughs> or, you know what I mean? So it was like, and then he was leading the race. I was like, this is crazy. Um, Everybody had a great race. Not a, There was only one wreck in like the beginning. And I was like, all right, it's pretty non-wrecking. Everybody's driving. They were driving four wide, four wide for lap after lap. I was like, Jesus Christ, these guys are crazy. And then I'm um, with four laps to go. Reddick was in a great place, man. Four laps, man. And I liked where he sat. I mean, it was good in points because it got sketchy there in points here right at the end. And uh, he was sitting good. And then he got he got involved in that huge wreck. And it just, I like, he didn't, he didn't get a DNF, but he, he went from where he could have been in the top 10. Were there any tires or anything that flew near the crowd? Did he get no, any? No, uh... no. Where the big wreck was, was in the backside of the racetrack. And I don't think there's anything there. Nah. So most of it is on the on front. Perfect. I mean, the front Brilliant is so right long. I, I went to go get the merchandise and, um, it was on the complete opposite end of the track where I was and was staying. And by the time I got back to the camper, <laughs> I was exhausted. It was like two, a two and a half mile walk to go get the stuff and then walk all the way back to the trailer. You know what I mean? I was like, holy shit, that was brutal. Fair enough. All right. You want to hear my questions? Um, uh, All I got to say is shout out to um uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. for winning the race. And hey, beating Brad Kozlowski. Yeah, who was a big D's guy by thousands of a second. And we, that it was, was like my, the, one of the most emotional question. moments ever. So, right. okay. What do you got for me? Well, that was question number one. Question number two was, uh, is Southern hospitality real? Are you well, well welcomed with open arms by everyone there? I was welcomed with open arms. I believe it's, um, it's true. The Southern hospitality was, um, 
second to none. I mean, you know, living in California, definitely the hospitality was way, way. Everybody was much nicer from the people standing behind every convenience store, tumping it, <laughs> typing in numbers to people at all the other merchandising places and here and there, restaurants. Yeah, it was, I had a very nice experience. Everybody was very kind. All right. Did you get a lot of y'alls? Uh, only or, when I, no, not really. Not too many y'alls? I right. didn't get a lot of y'alls. I think you, that might be stereo, stereotyping somebody. I think that, no. That's um, possible. That might be more Northern redneck, which I'm more familiar with. Well, you know, I almost said yes. And I would, and I said yes, because um, there was, I sat next to some people from, D from Michigan. And, <laughs> and I believe that they actually said y'all to me that yeah. was when i that's when i was gonna say you know yes but i was like nah because those people yeah. were from michigan now i'm a pennsylvania and i say y'all all the time all right yeah. uh, okay yeah i don't know maybe just a, up midwest redneck i guess maybe y'all i mean you know so but now in, in enough, Alabama, i didn't get a lot of that i felt um no no all right i guess the last question is well, it's just more of a optimistic view. Well, how many sad Alabama fans did you see in Talladega? Or tell me about the football in 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 the state. In the well, I'll be honest with you. It was um, it was in the campgrounds themselves. There was probably an Alabama flag on almost every camper, ah. and I heard a lot of roll tide. As we walked through the Talladega fan zones and campgrounds and at the end of the night, as we sat and drank the people that walked by us, I heard a lot of roll tide and that was Friday. I heard that Saturday morning a lot. And then I heard a lot of different comments by Saturday night. Cause I, I believe the, um, the shock of being beat by Vanderbilt ah. knocked a little bit of the wind out of some of the fans. I mean, because, I mean, as much as those people might enjoy racing, I believe that Roll Tide Alabama thing might have meant more to most of those people there because they seemed very upset and and very angry and uh, and angry towards Alabama. Not, you know, not so much Vanderbilt, you know, because I don't really think you can ever be mad at Vanderbilt for beating you because you no, shouldn't lose to Vanderbilt. They're going to do your taxes later. You got to be on good terms with that. Stay on good terms with those people because they're going to, you know, save you money. So, yeah, there was a lot. It was definitely a a, a, a knock in the sail for those people. There was the wind disappeared. <laughs> so That's very cool. Very cool. You yes. got any more uh, got any more Talladega stuff or should we just jump into the uh, college football upset and whatnot? Um, I think you should grab the next topic sign because I'm going to think really hard. Um, nope. I got it. it. Let's do it. Um, yeah. Vanderbilt beats Alabama. That that's, that's a shift in the, uh, top 25, um, poll there for teams. Oh, it is for sure. And I, well, I think the best part about that is Vanderbilt got to steal the goalpost and once again, throw it into the Cumberland river. Nice. Which is, I mean, they, this is the second time they've done that and it's pretty awesome. Uh, there was another team that tried to steal their goalposts. Is uh, Arkansas beat Tennessee? The number four unbeaten Volunteers went down. Okay. And Arkansas tried to steal them, but they have these weird collapsible goalposts that I wanted to talk about. You don't know about this. Students probably had no idea. They're like basically on a big clip into the stadium, so you could rip them down, but they're still bolted by a huge metal clip to like earth. Nice. <laughs> So you're not taking it anywhere. It's just on the ground. <laughs> right now it's on the ground. You've gotten that part. It's still on the ground. So it's go Arkansas, the but they're going to have to come with some torches next time if they want to take the goalposts. And beat them. <laughs> and beat them again, yeah. And beat them again, right? Don't forget about the beating part. You can't touch a goalpost if you don't win. Yeah. <clears throat> so good. Okay. Good um, those teams. I, I didn't see a lot of college now. I will be honest because I did do the, 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 the race before the um, Sprint Cup race. I mean, the Saturday race, I went and watched it. So I did, I, I mean, I, most of my week was racing. But I do know that Ohio State won without a problem against Iowa. So, and that's about it. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, basically, there were some upsets. We just talked about Alabama losing, Arkansas beating Tennessee. 
Uh, the main schools, Ohio State won. Penn State had a pretty easy time with UCLA in our uh, little inaugural battle. Right. Uh, That's US the first time, huh? Yeah. So, I mean, we go to USC next week. You go to Oregon. So, I guess this is the first time Ohio State and Penn State are going, you know, an impossible, diff difficult situation on the West Coast. Huh. But, I mean, I'd rather talk about your receiver and the other two receivers that could win the Blitnikoff. I think those are the most exciting guys in football. I don't really care about the race right now. We're we're getting there. But, man, these receivers are so freaking exciting, man. I, I know I'm very excited about the kid for Ohio State. And to have another one that could be considered another best receiver in football. I, I feel bad for the kid that's been there the last two years for Ohio State who just – who was also a very good receiver and uh abuka abuki amika abuka yes yeah abuka yeah i mean that kid has been lights out you know sitting riding you know you know secondary <laughs> to oh, we marvin harrison really jr and coattails, coattails of marvin harrison jr garrett Chris wilson Alade. garrett wilson yeah i mean I hope he still of, gets drafted in a good position and makes a I name for himself in the NFL. We'll go 15th, you know? be Jerry Rice. It's all good. Yeah, you know what I mean? Something like that. But yeah, Jeremiah Smith is. Have you ever seen so many one handed touchdowns in a year since Randy Moss was doing Randy Moss things? No. I have not. No. I'd say, I'd say this kid, uh, Jeremiah Smith for Ohio State, has the best hands. I'd say. Ryan Williams, the 17-year-old for Alabama receiver, ridiculous. He's got the best moves. And okay. Travis Hunter kind of has, like, the whole package. He is kind of the whole package. I still really like him. I mean, yeah, for this year, smaller. you know, you don't have – Smith is only a freshman. Yeah. And Hunter's so the is the other kid, right? Draft. He's still – yeah, Travis Hunter could probably take it this year and – Hey, right, well, he's redshirt sophomore. He's not going to beat these two guys any awards, but I mean, he gets, he will be drafted. I hope so. Oh, I mean, I don't, yeah, he's He'll probably the happy first... he doesn't have to compete with these other two dudes. Yeah, in three right. Years, they're going to be ridiculous. Yeah, he'll be. He'll have a hard time against these two. Of course, you know the quarterback's got to, you know, be able to throw the ball to you too. I know the that Howard kid for the um, Buckeyes. I think this is he's a junior or a senior because he was a transfer. So, and they said he, you know. He was with Kansas State, I believe, or something like that. He was really good out of there. So I know that yeah. doesn't hurt the young man from Ohio State. Who's throwing to Williams? Who's uh well, Milrose fine for Alabama, and you got Shador Sanders, one of the more accurate yeah. sons of a god that you have in the world. So I mean okay. that's cool. So yeah, so they both they, they got quarterbacks, you know. Hopefully the quarterbacks next year are just as good to throw the ball to him. I know Marvin kind of suffered when his high school buddy came into the league. Well, you know, things happen. I don't so, think it's uh I don't think that's a big deal at all. No. They'll still be great. Yeah. They're just gonna get better. Yeah. Um, what else you got for college? Oh, oh, well, just like like I said, next week we got both the Big Ten studs heading out west. We also got the Red River rivalry. Yes, <laughs> which is which there are both one loss teams, so that's a huge monster game in the SEC. Oklahoma, Texas, an SEC game. It blows my mind, but that's what yeah, I mean. know, huh? It's like, what? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Well, let's still get still get the rivalry. Yeah, no, we got some good games coming up. Should yeah. be a fun fun weekend. It should be. All right, well, let's move on to pro football then, because you know, once you're done with college, you go to the NFL. What do you? What were you excited about this weekend for the NFL? I got to see a little more NFL games. Well, I'm excited. Should we just skip the Niners game? Because, listen, Niners fans, I'm looking at you right now. Do not panic. Uh, we've lost three games, special team, and a lot of, uh, listen, this was preseason. The 12 games that matter happen right now. Seattle. We covered by 30 on Thursday. Let's go. Green Bay. What's up, shoot? <laughs> Green Bay ran away. All right. So he you're thinks not beat, you're not going to beat Seattle. Oh, yeah. No. Sweep them right under the rug. Where's it at? All. Where's it Seattle. at? Kyle wants Seattle. to know. You're going to lose in Seattle. Pretty can't win in Seattle. All right. Another uh, FB and the Goob dollar on the line. I'll double it. I put two FB and the Goob dollars on this. We're not losing Seattle. 
Huh? You're not losing to Seattle? Why not? If not. They got good receivers. Geno's playing okay. They got a good running game. Yes. They have no linebackers, no defensive tackles. We're going to run all over them, and all their turnovers are a fluke. We're going to create some. Actually, their receivers might be a problem. Shaverius Ward, I think, is out. It might be, oh, my God, it might be chaos. But, no, uh, we'll be fine. Could be 28-7 at half. Seattle's totally up. cool. <laughs> so listen jordan love got his first win this year very important man i wanted to say that like but in a, like a whiny bitchy kind of way no i i don't think you can whine and bitch about that i mean we're three and three and two but he's got one under his belt now um th- to be honest with you he needed it josh jacobs got his first touchdown as a packer running the ball over 100 yards he needed that uh, Reed is just unbelievable. Thank and, God since your other receivers a diva now and doesn't want to play, even though he had the most targets on the team. Yeah, right. It's like what Romeo, oh Romeo. I mean, well, let's. I mean, he had Willis for two of the games. I don't know what he's really complaining about. Um, weird, the, right? The, the Vikings game. I mean, that was just running around madness, trying to come back from being down so much and. Jordan Love trying to find rhythm again. I don't know what he was. I don't. I mean, I think he needs to wait until like game seven or eight with this guy and say, "Hey, I'm not getting any touches." So I don't know. For such weird start, I don't know what Romeo's complaining about. Yeah, and no, I um, like to just bring up bad shit because you guys are pretty well uh, in line for a good future. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But Reed is. He's unbelievable, and he uh, looks Zay, like him and Bay Flowers, man. They're just. They're so fast off the line. It's just like, what the fuck that guy doing? Right. And good hands. You see that catch by him against the Rams? I was like, Shh. tried not to. Yeah. Uh, and then Tucker Kraft is the second coming of Gronk, I think. I really do. I think he's the true George Kiddo Gronkowski. I know Musgrave not was me. the big stud, but it looks like they drafted two. Uh-huh. And it looks like one paid off really well, you know? Two touchdowns. Sure. Not one touchdown, stiff armed and barreled on through like a crazy man. I was like, Nah, a lot of bad, a lot of bad tackling. <laughs> Rams are bad at tackling. Nah, that kid's gonna be that kid's gonna be okay. So, and then McKinney with his sixth interception, he's got one in each game. He got he got his another one. That's sick. Yeah. All right. Sorry, that's not cool. Boo. All right. No, that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah. No, that's super sick. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I uh. I think that might be the um so far the the biggest free agent free agency pickup could be McKinney. Sure. I'd say easily. Easily, right? I mean, picking right. off the ball in each game since you've started for them. Yeah. <laughs> that's got to be, right? All right. Well, that's all I got on the Packers, buddy. That was my little happy rant about nice. the Green Bay Packers getting a win. Well, that's cool because I mean, the main story today and yesterday was how an ex Packer fired an ex Niner in New Jersey. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I know, huh? Somehow Salah got fired with the same record he had last year, and his quarterbacks are playing exactly the same. Just one was named Aaron Rodgers, who said he whispered to the GM, Woody, whatever his name is. Hey, Woody. It's not my fault. Yeah. I fired a coach. Fire the coach. Yeah, I'm not too nah, sure. I hate Aaron Rodgers. What a cock. Yeah, I don't really understand. I mean, maybe it's game management. Maybe it was how he's running the team. I I don't know. I I I Aaron Rodgers. Niners and Packers just don't get along, man. They should have known that from the start. Yeah, you know, Hatchet Hackett's the problem. The Hackett's the problem. Their offense sucks. It's got no. It's not doing anything exciting. You know what I mean? So the defense is the number five, four defense in the league. So it looked like Rob Sala was doing his job. Then I don't know what he was missing as a coach. I, you know, I think Aaron Rodgers is probably one of the bigger reasons the Jets are not. They got a lot of talent. He's not very good. <laughs> I mean, he's getting old and slow. So yeah. every linebacker slash defensive tackle runs at least, you know, Four eight at the slowest. Rogers runs in his mind. The fastest. (laughs) 
So in my mind, I'm running, bro. Yeah, in my mind, I'm running. Well, you're not running fast enough, Aaron. <laughs> so, yeah, so anyway, Aaron, he's got a he's got a hurt ankle now. So, oh yeah, he's done. He's yeah, awful, we'll so. see. No coach yeah. now. They went from the uh, head coach, who was the defensive coach, to the assistant coach, who was the assistant defensive coach. So I don't know. Well, we'll yeah. see. They play the Bills next. They could be two and four, two and five, five. They they could be first in the division. <laughs> <laughs> if they beat the Bills, they're first in the division. That's how bad the AFC East is right now. They just, you know, I don't know. They're just they're not very good compared to the they're rest. About of as the good AFC. as the NFC West. Sure, yeah, yeah, we can do that comparison. But I mean, I'd rather stick with the AFC and just be like Baltimore, Kansas City, and the Texans. Like, they're probably better than anyone in football. I Say mean, those teams again: the Texans, the Chiefs, and the Ravens. Well, it's odd that the Chiefs are the best when their quarterback's like one of the worst in football. Uh, is it possible that Mahomes could win an MVP while throwing for about a? Buck forty a game, <laughs> and and a one to one interception to touchdown ratio. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow it's possible, I think. But they win every game. He makes yeah. every play that really matters and counts. They've beaten good teams too. It's not like they've had a joke schedule. They they beat the Ravens. They, they beat Cincinnati, Detroit. I think. I mean, yeah, I don't get it. I mean, it's Kelsey, probably. Maybe Kelsey Chris throws Jones. a lateral a game or some shit like that. I mean, I don't understand. That weird going. bland lateral that always that, works. All the announcers go, oh, my God, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Right. He gets the ball cutting across. P. Ryan's running up the sideline. You know, it's like, okay. Yeah, no, sounds good. Funny. I can't argue with it, though. I mean, those teams are the best. I, I can't see Steelers or Bengals or Colts or Jaguars or anyone making a run at this point. Well, I mean, you can't run against the Chiefs. That's some their defense is really uh it's top notch, man. All Chris Mahomes Jones has gotta do is Chris game manage 17 points and they win. Right? Chris Jones is like, no Aaron Donald. I am officially the best defensive tackle. I'm officially it now. The first time in my life. First time ever. I've been following you, this Aaron Donald guy for years. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so. no, he's a stud, man. It was it was nasty watching him making moves. Yeah, he, he just, just he bulldozes people. That linebacker they have too, that 34 or 32, whatever that linebacker is. Man, he's really good too, man. And their cornerbacks, they got a couple of good ones. I mean, their defense, I mean, Mahomes is on he can do all the dumb shit on the offensive side as long as he keeps scoring points. <laughs> so just more than the other team, yeah. Which, yeah, so far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good. So I gotta say they're the best in the uh AFC. Yeah. Who's the worst in the AFC? Whew. I mean, you got to think the Bengals shouldn't be there, but, but they're, they're just, right there. They're just right there. Jacksonville oh. got off the schneid. So we finally uh, no winless teams in the AFC anymore. Yeah, and with them getting right? off, with them getting a Bigsby monster game, you know, monster game by Bigsby. So yeah. Trevor Lawrence now has a win. I mean, like, Trevor Lawrence can't – neither of those teams could be the worst, right? <laughs> There's just, just no way. Well, right now, that's who's the worst. It still league. might be the Steelers. <laughs> they have a lot of wins, but they might be the worst. Right. I don't know how they keep pulling off wins. I was kind of disappointing they lost to the Cowboys this week. Yeah. Like, terrible game. In a game. game they could have won. They really could have won that Well, it was, a la it was Zach at, right at the end, right? Like 20 seconds to go to Turpin or some shit like that for a win. Or Like, oh, okay. That game I didn't get to finish. That one pooped out of me in Alabama. Like ah. the, we were using satellite TV, and then I don't know what happened. I was like, I'll figure it out in the morning. It was late when that game ended because it started late. So by the time <laughs> it ended in Alabama, it was almost 1 a.m. Or You, you had 12. more Cavartier than bars. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I had, that was terrible there. You know, you're around and there's airports right next to you because all the millionaires are landing their planes and helicopters flying everywhere. It's crazy. All right, so that is our worst, is the Bengals and the Jaguars. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? I'm going to put Cleveland right there as our worst team. 
You know, it is a shame that they have to start Deshaun Watson every week because if they don't, they're just giving somebody $46 million a year to do nothing. I, I would I would ride him till he died. You know what I mean? I would have 500 quarterback running plays set up just for him to run. Because yeah, I was going to say, well, if there's an injury clause, if you just run the quarterback sneak a bunch of times in a row and – no, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you do to try to get rid of them. You know, just, you know, 46 quarterback runs a game and a couple of option runs with like offense alignment. So when he turns to throw the ball, they're not there. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> right. Why is this guy the running back? Because we're trying to get rid of you, bro. <laughs> now nah, you're right. Browns and Raiders are probably the easiest to make fun of. Yeah, I would have to say Browns and Raiders. Devontae's on his way out. You got Gardner right, Minshew Min- being benched Min- again third. for O'Connell. So, I mean, they're, they don't know what to do between Minshew and, and the, the O'Connell kid, right? Well, That's, Minshew got hurt, so O'Connell gets the next couple weeks. Still, was he really He's hurt? Good. I'm going to go for – I'm going to grow a mustache and go for Minshew with the headband. That's nice. what I'm going for Halloween. That's your Halloween costume? And my, my shirt's going to say, looking for work. Looking for work. Just, just, have, just have LFW on it. People think it's like a MILF shirt. And you say, no, it's looking for work shirt. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to explain stuff. It's too loud. No, it's too hard, huh? So, yeah, Back. I had Raiders, Cleveland's. And uh, that's got to be the two worst teams, right? Cleveland, for sure. The other two teams, Cincinnati and Jacksonville, they'll, they'll start winning some games. They're like the Dolphins, just very underperforming right now. Yeah, I agree. They'll, they'll start winning some games. So which one of those three teams has the best chance of resurrecting? The Dolphins, the Bengals, the Jaguars. I gotta say the I gotta say the Jaguars. I can't. It's two are coming back. Wrong. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the Tourettes. It is the Tourettes, I know. Are well, you gonna say the Bengals? Oh, no, I don't have a good answer. I just wanted to yell wrong. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, and that's just the Tourette's then, right? Yeah, just they still keep having to play Pittsburgh and the Ravens and, you know, Jaguars don't. <laughs> so, I don't, know. I don't know. I'm saying Jaguars. Know. You had them in the NFC, AFC championship game playing Texas. So, I can't believe yeah. you're not saying. Well, obviously, Evan Ingram is the key since he hasn't played yet this year. So He is definitely the key to, he's, the key. he's definitely, what's his name, safety valve. All right, NFC. Do you have the best in the NFC? I know who the best in the NFC is. Well, there's three teams with one or less losses. We yeah. The Vikings and the Lions and the Commanders. Right. Two of those teams we did not expect to be there. I would and, and I would assume that those two teams will be the two teams that fall off. I'm assuming as the year the year goes on, Darnold will be, you know figured out i'm pretty sure that well donald didn't play against any of our cornerbacks and we almost beat him and you know i'm not really convinced on minnesota aaron jones might have been his safety blanket blanket now he's hurt now he's hurt yeah and, and i expect him to be hurt like a few more times because that's what he did does too so <laughs> that's what he does yeah that's what he does he's so hurt. yeah i i have been so as we stand now Two of the top three teams as best teams. I don't think they'll be there. And I, and, but I don't really know about Washington. I don't know how what to say about Washington. Because out of nowhere, this kid's being C.J. Stroud. As good as, yeah, as good as Jane Daniels is, I just, I feel like Washington is lacking, like Buffalo, kind of in the depth department. So while their starters might be pretty good, Jane Daniels making it work. We get, if we lose McLaurin or an offensive lineman, Redskins probably lose four straight. <laughs> right, right, right. I think they could come back to earth. I really do. Good. Um, I love the way he's playing, though. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's fake. I think Commanders still are in that division. I uh, yeah. Unless the Cowboys, who you know we're probably going to talk about here in a minute, unless yeah. the Cowboys come out of nowhere and to really turn it around. Uh, neither neither the Eagles or Cowboys look. That good, so I'm. No, I mean, I'm, not I'm not impressed afraid. with. I don't. I'm not impressed with the Eagles at all. Like I say, I don't like Jalen Hurts. I think he's <laughs> lacking in the uh, true starting quarterback position. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, no. I mean, it is early. This is basically the preseason. 
since uh, we don't have preseason anymore. So now that's over. And now shit get furious. Right, which makes me nervous for Jordan Love because he's still in preseason mode now. <laughs> he's got one more Maybe game. Like he's only had, yeah, it's three games. Three games, you know. So this yep. should be it. This should be his first game. He should come out. We should kick ass. Romeo Dobbs should be happy. That's right. Yep. Um, So who are the real best teams in the NFC, though? I mean, because we know it's not the Vikings. We know it's not the Washington Commanders. No, I think it is the Commanders. I think it's the Commanders and the Packers. And the Niners and Lions. Yeah, probably the Lions. But honestly, Brian Flores needs a lot of credit because the defense for the Vikings is unbelievably tricky. I know people keep saying it, but I watched the Niners game again on a like an NFL network.com replay. And we had no fucking clue what he was doing. All of a sudden this guy would come flying out of this way. We'd be like, where the fuck did that guy come from? So I got to give Brian Flores a little credit. I think NFC North is by far the toughest division. They might get three teams in. Then we'll just pick a couple from here and there. Right. Yeah, that's fine. I can see that. You know, usually that's the AF- NFC West where they get the Niners, the Seahawks, and, you know, like the Rams in. Nah, we keep rotating. We're It's your yeah. turn now. I'll take that. You know, I, I, I'd love to see the, the Vikings or the Lions in the playoffs, you know. So I don't want to see the Niners in the playoffs. So I would prefer it was like the Seahawks <laughs> sick of losing to the Niners. So uh, it's too early to count anyone out. Everyone has two wins. Basically. It's all good. I know who's the worst then <laughs> in the NFC. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not anyone in the West. It could be everyone in the East. Um, Carolina's Carolina, the giants. Like I said, I mean, that they're, that's, <laughs> Those teams didn't fall far from the predicted tree. No, they didn't. Um, yeah, Carolina. They got their ass handed to them by the Bears. I guess Andy Dalton Bears was only good. Bad, but... Andy Dalton was only good for one start this year. <laughs> so usually Andy gets three or four, but apparently not. <laughs> Caleb Williams, that was at his turning game. I sure hope so. My fantasy, I mean, team lo- my fantasy team really wants it. So. Nice. Okay, well, we'll see then. I mean, he had he got- some nice passes, but once again, you know, Malik Willis beat the Colts. Malik Willis beat the Titans. I know. Malik Willis couldn't start on any football teams anywhere in the world. Caleb Williams has Carolina this week, so it's he gets one more week to fake it, and then he's got, like, a real team the week after that. Right, that's what I mean. You know, play the fake teams and then go out there and get your ass kicked by the you know the real team. Well, I'm not dropping him from a fantasy team till next week. Right, find out what he does again against a real team because it's just going to get more and more serious as the season goes on. Yeah. So. Progression. Well, all right. Anything? I mean, anything else excites you this week about well, football? Just like, I mean, from a fantasy standpoint, it was just ridiculous to watch how many people put up 40 plus games, like Lamar Jackson, Jamar Chase. Uh, all the quarterbacks on Thursday night games. So fantasy football was kind of off the hook this week. I enjoyed uh, it's back to remember week one where there was like two, 300 yard passing games and they checking it all over the place now. Love it. Right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I didn't see a lot being a Talladega, but I was excited to watch what I watch. I, I'm excited to watch Dallas just continue to suck. Yeah. You know, it's like, wow, Dallas just is a continue Cal to girl suck. Should not play football. Nope. Well, all right. You got any performers of the week there, man? I do. And I was going to go with the Kembe Matumbo, but then I realized that we stopped doing dead people. So I'm not going to do the Kembe. No, 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 no. I don't want to bring anybody down or make him sad. Aston Gene T, baby. We've talked about him before, but the Boise State running back put on another ridiculous show. All right. I'm going to give you his week stats and then his year stats. Okay. Ready? All right. For the week, 13 carries, 186 yards, three touchdowns. Well, that's really good for 13 carries. Pretty good. Yes. He sat out the second half. All right. So for the year, they've played five games, but basically he's only played four. 16 touchdowns over a thousand yards in basically four games. You're saying he's only played four because he sits down pretty much after the third quarter all the time? That is correct. Okay. 
Yeah, no, Ashton Genty, man, he's ridiculous. He's got more yards per carry than Reggie Bush did in his best year. Like, all his stats are off the charts. Uh, it's unbelievable. He, he's my performer of the week, and I think he's actually taken the lead in the Heisman uh, gambling balloting. Really? Yeah. Ahead of <clears throat> your boy and all their other quarterbacks. You know, my performer of the week, I had many to think of. Spirit uh, Airlines. <laughs> So I'm I'm gonna go with um the pilot on the Delta airplane who decided to land it instead of taking off. I mean, after it, well, I mean, it just smashed down to the ground, you know. But you know, for getting to us where we were supposed to get, to, I'm Wait, giving what, that guy. The, he took off when he wasn't supposed to, or he landed when he. Sh- what happened? No, he uh he took off and then the plane came smashed into the ground. He locked up the brakes and nothing really bad happened. So that's my performer of the so week. So he successfully crash landed you. He successfully crash landed okay. us. Good for that fucking guy. So to the Delta pilot who successfully crash landed us out of Salt nice. Lake City. He's like Tom Hanks, upside down and shit. Yes, he is my Sully. <laughs> he's your Sully. All right, I like it. Performer of the week. So he's my performer of the week. Alabama yeah. Sully. Alabama Sully. Alabama Delta Sully. That's <laughs> nice. Boy. That's cool. So I like that. Uh, what are you excited for next week? You gonna ne- you got uh, a next topic next week? Looking forward to <laughs> uh hoping the Knicks don't win the NBA championship is all I'm looking forward to basketball. Um, yeah, man. Listen, I'm looking forward to that Knicks thing too. We didn't I didn't get to talk about it at all because I really haven't been around, but Trading Randall, who you know I've wanted to trade for a long time. Oh, great move. Kind of sad about DiVincenzo, I think, because of the Villanova trio thing. We lost that, but then we didn't really lose it because we still got Hart, Bridges, and I like Cat. I don't know what his defense is going to be like, but Thibodeau's a defensive guy, so maybe he can suck some of it out of him. Or Bridges, or, or you know, the other guys like Olin, um, What's the other guy? Oh, yeah. M- Mikhail Bridges is uh, so much better of a defender than uh, DiVincenzo. I mean, you lose a little bit of shooting, a little bit of, right. uh, I don't know, I guess ball movement kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, Cat's a decent defender, not quite the rim protector, but he is seven feet tall. So, I mean, that helps. Right. And he's a good shooter. One of the best shooting centers in the history of basketball, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, we got that. Um, yeah, yes. I'm excited for the next. We'll see what's going to happen here. Oh, uh, I feel like I have, I'm going to have like childhood memories. It's going to be Knicks, Sixers, Celtics. It's going to remind me of the late 80s. Right. It's all that little triangle, and they just travel around, beat the shit out of each other the whole year. Oh, I can't wait for that. Yeah, that should be fun in the East. I, the West, I don't think Golden State has a chance, but there's a lot of things to be excited about. I mean, Anthony Edwards stepping up in Minnesota. Sure, he's the man now. I think it's, I really think it's SGA, Oklahoma City versus the field. And I'll take OKC. But I'm excited to see how that plays out. Chris Paul and Wemby, you excited to see that crazy shit? <laughs> Wemby's put on 25 pounds, I heard. That's pretty good. You know, he needed to put on weight, so I heard he put on like 25 pounds. That's pretty good because that kid needed to put on some weight. I mean, I don't think we're going to see Dwight Howard, but I think we're going to see a little bit of a thicker um, Victor but hey, man, if he just takes the same progression as Giannis did, then he's – forget about it. Just yeah. forget about it. Fucking so, forget him. And Chris Paul, I mean, sure, he's good at passing the ball. Yeah. Even last year, he was like – he played like four minutes, had like 12 assists. Who else, though? <laughs> Who else is on San Antonio? They had a lot of draft picks. Didn't I, I think they do. Good. A lot of guys that we don't know their names yet and right. probably weren't really big names in college, actually. But – uh. Yeah, the other two new guys I'm excited about, Clay playing with Luca, and then DeJounte Murray. DeJounte Murray with Zion. No, oh, okay. So That'd Trey and DeJounte in Atlanta finally broke up. Uh, that right. Was, that had to happen. Yeah, eventually, yeah, right. So yeah, those are some fun things. I think uh, watching Kaminga and Curry in Golden State is going to be fun for the 38 games we win. It's going to be really sure. annoying and frustrating for the rest of the year, is my guess. Yeah, it's not going to be uh, – it's all over for you guys, right? You still got Draymond, right? Uh, 
I got gas. Where did, I want Jordan Pool back. Oh, yeah. Probably not It'd getting be way more fun. Is he still on Washington? Where was he at Washington? Yeah. They're probably going to keep him. They don't have any, anybody else. So they had to get a good draft pick this year, right? She had to, right? Shit. Yeah, they always draft dumb players. <laughs> I guess we'll see. What else are you excited for? Excited for you're excited for Thursday night. You're excited for a win. Oh, win. hockey has begun, huh? Penguins we had three games Rangers. today, right? Penguins Rangers tomorrow night in Pittsburgh. Nice. So this Sid's last year. Huh? Is this Sid's last year? He just signed a three year extension, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, now he might be on a different team at the end of this year, but who's to say? I think he'll probably stick it out. We just got to play better. Better hockey. Get well, younger. So how about now, the Florida Panthers? You know that? Oh, it, well, I think it's going to be either Nashville or Florida versus Edmonton or Colorado. Quick prediction. Okay. That's a good prediction. We'll we'll get into some more hockey next week then. Because yeah. we'll have started and we'll see where things are going. Uh, baseball to come to an end for me, maybe. Padres take a uh, – 2-1 lead on the Dodgers. We knew it. Just I think we said it two weeks ago. Just this is gonna be terrible. Once yeah, you, again. No pitching. We have no pitching. 40 you've signed 40 starting pitchers this year, and only six are left healthy. <laughs> yeah, not the better six. So we'll see. We need to get a little more hits after we got to five. We didn't put anybody else on base today, I believe. Maybe one player. So it was like, that's not very good. <laughs> so what happened to all these great batters we had on the team? Uh, I'm excited good. for the Packers, guys, of man. course. And then let's not forget this week's race is at Charlotte. And Love I believe North this Carolina. is the last before we go to eight. I believe we still have 12 left. I believe we go to eight after this week. So chop them all. That's what I say. Good luck. <laughs> good luck to Mr. Reddick, who is now uh, he's on. He's one point ahead of eighth. So Woo. that means he's just one point ahead of the cut line here, basically in seventh. Dang. Yeah. Get back together, homie. I believe Charlotte is a good race for Mr. Reddick. We'll hope. Busher looked really good at Talladega this week. It was kind of fun seeing a lot of Busher, too. Um, Reddick was in the middle of the pack the whole time, so it wasn't that fun. So, but next week will be. Uh, I'm FB. I'm Otani doing the goob. <laughs> Hope Otani does something that's better than the goob this week. Later. Yeah, <laughs> probably.